When is a chemical reaction like a motorway? Well, the answer is when it can go both ways. This tutorial is all about the Haber process, which is a process used to make an important industrial chemical called ammonia. For foundation level, you only need to know a few facts about the Haber process, the chemical reaction and the conditions needed to make it successful. But at higher level, you need to be able to explain those conditions, why they're chosen, and in particular, why an optimum temperature of 450 degrees is chosen. Let's start with a little bit about reversible reactions. Normally at GCSE, we see chemical reactions that start off as reactants and become products, and that's that. But reversible reactions can go both ways. The reactants can react together to make the products, but also the products can decompose again to make the reactants. In reality, most reversible reactions reach what is called a dynamic equilibrium. That means that after a period of time, there is a fixed amount of a mixture of both the reactants and the products in the chemical reaction. Both the forward reaction and the backward reaction are still going, but they're going at the same rate. So the proportion of the equilibrium mixture doesn't change. We're specifically looking at a reaction between nitrogen, which is a gas, and hydrogen, which is a gas, to make ammonia, which is a gas. Dynamic equilibrium is a little bit like a motorway. We have the M1 between London and Nottingham. Now if the rate of cars travelling from London north to Nottingham is the same as the rate of cars travelling south from Nottingham to London, then we have an equilibrium between the two cities. The number of people in each of those cities wouldn't change, although the actual people would. That's a bit like a chemical reaction which is in equilibrium. It's a reversible reaction. Reactants are changing into products, and products are changing into reactants. But the proportion, or the number of molecules of each of the reactants and products, hasn't overall changed. In the Haber process, the reactants, nitrogen and hydrogen, are both gases, and the product, ammonia, is also a gas. In order to make a fast rate of reaction, in other words, to make ammonia quickly, three conditions are used in order to increase the speed of the reaction. The first is to increase the temperature to about 450 degrees. This means that the particles gain energy and that makes them move faster. It means that the collisions between the nitrogen and the hydrogen are more frequent and have more energy and are more likely to be successful. The second thing is to use an increased pressure of around 200 times atmospheric pressure. Increasing the pressure means that the particles of the gases are forced closer together and this means that collisions again will be more frequent making a faster reaction. A third thing which is done is to use a catalyst of iron. Again this increases the rate of reaction. We also need to look at how changing those conditions affects the position of the equilibrium. In other words the percentage yield of ammonia in the mixture. The forward reaction of nitrogen reacting with hydrogen is an exothermic reaction, shown here by this negative value for the heat of reaction. That means it gives out heat. Now if we're increasing the temperature of the mixture, we're actually inhibiting the forward reaction. That's because the reverse reaction, going from ammonia to nitrogen and hydrogen again, is endothermic. It requires heat. So by increasing the temperature, what we're doing is encouraging that reverse reaction. So increasing the temperature reduces the yield of ammonia. Increasing the pressure increases the yield of ammonia. This is because on the left-hand side of the equation we have four volumes of gas. That's one volume of nitrogen and three volumes of hydrogen. Whereas on the right-hand side we have two volumes of gas. That's two volumes of ammonia. Increasing the pressure will tend to squeeze those four volumes down into two volumes. Therefore, increasing the pressure will increase the yield of ammonia. Adding a catalyst doesn't affect the position of equilibrium. The task of the chemical engineer is to choose conditions which make ammonia in as cheap a way as possible. 
Because increasing the temperature increases the rate of reaction, that means the ammonia is made more quickly, but having too high a temperature makes a very low yield. However, a reasonable temperature of 450 degrees is used because it gives a high enough rate and yet doesn't give so low a yield as not to be worthwhile. Secondly, a high pressure of 200 atmospheres is used. This gives both a good yield and also a good rate of reaction. Using a higher pressure than this just isn't financially viable because the equipment used would be too expensive. Finally, a catalyst of iron is used. It increases the rate of reaction and it has no effect on yield, so therefore it's good to use a catalyst of iron. Overall, a yield of around 14 to 15 percent is quite sufficient. It may seem low, but because it's made fast, it's economical. In examination questions, you're sometimes faced with a graph such as this one, and asked how the yield of ammonia varies with the temperature and the pressure. Well, in order not to get too confused, it's ideal to look at a particular line. So let's start by looking at the line for 350 degrees. We can see that a constant temperature of 350 degrees, if we increase the pressure, then we also increase the yield of ammonia. So therefore, increasing the pressure increases the yield of ammonia. Secondly, let's look at the effect of increasing the temperature. For this we need to keep a constant pressure. So let's look at only 200 atmospheres of pressure. At 200 atmospheres of pressure, when we have a temperature of 550 degrees, the yield is quite low. Whereas if we have a temperature of 350 degrees, the yield is quite high. So, at a constant pressure, increasing the temperature reduces the yield of ammonia. A final factor in the Haber process to make ammonia cheaply is illustrated by this summary diagram. Here we see on the left hand side that the nitrogen and the hydrogen, the raw materials, are mixed together in the correct proportions of one part nitrogen to three parts hydrogen and then placed under pressure, pumped into the reaction vessel. In the reaction vessel, the mixture of gases passes over a catalyst of iron at a temperature of 450 degrees and at high pressure, 200 atmospheres. The resulting mixture is then cooled. This condenses the ammonia out of the mixture, which then becomes liquid ammonia and is collected and taken away, whereas the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen, continuous gases, are pumped around and are recycled back into the process so as not to waste them. The same thing is shown on this even simpler flow diagram. The raw materials of nitrogen and hydrogen are mixed in the correct ratio and introduced into the reaction vessel. Here the reaction conditions of 450 degrees, an optimum temperature, 200 atmospheres of pressure, a high pressure, and a catalyst of iron are used in order to make ammonia as cheaply as possible. From the reaction vessel, the gases are cooled the ammonia turns to liquid and is collected, whereas the unreacted gases are recycled and put back into the process.